actually, uh, even though when I was working uh, fairly steadily as a musician and a music teacher, I'd had a pretty strong interest in natural healing, having you know raised my own kids that way for the most part. And uh, I was introduced uh, to uh, this technology, quantum biofeedback, in the late 80s, and that really began my journey of exploration uh, in a wider field of understanding uh, the human condition and how there's so much more, as your last uh, speaker was talking mm-hmm. about, and very well, by the way, uh, there's just so much more beyond uh, the limited physical or material realm uh, to, to appreciate uh, particularly in the areas of health, healing, and human happiness. So it was a natural progression through technologies, different techniques, and uh, really the dowsing for both of us is a simplification, uh, I think, of some of the other modalities that we've worked with. Okay, let's talk about dowsing. First of all, explain to most of us just what the heck it is. You think of, now this was prior to me t- dealing with the Ramon Grace. You know Ramon real well more of the traditional practice of dowsing as it's been practiced likely for hundreds if not thousands of years and that's a way of accessing information through subtle changes in your own physiology uh, of uh, uh, to the to the environment around you for example you know and that we call that classic dowsing when a farmer needs to locate a, a well or a stream you know, they'll go out and uh, with a very, very simple tool, they will simply uh, tune in, you might say, to the electromagnetic field of the earth itself, as well as the subtle energies created by moving water. And their own physiology, because their mind is allowing this, this, the possibility of this level of sensitivity, you might say, their own physiology will feed back a change in the energy as they walk across the field, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a skill like any other. Uh, the more you work with it, of course, the more refined and accurate it gets. But really, that uh, is my understanding of how that really works. Now, uh, there is, a, there is a, a physiological explanation for how it is that, that we can interface on that kind of a level, and it's simply that the, uh, that the conscious mind operates primarily through the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, and it controls the larger muscles of the body. So when we consciously want to get up and go somewhere, that's basically what happens. The conscious mind, however, only accounts for about 10% of our total uh, available mind power. And that other 90%, which in the past has been referred to as the unconscious, we prefer the term superconscious to give ourselves a little credit, is actually monitoring subtle changes not only in the body and regulating all of the thousands of processes that go on below our conscious awareness, but it's also sensitive to subtle changes in the environment. So when a dowser asks a question to himself, he's asking a question from that conscious mind to the superconscious, and the superconscious will respond rather than through the central nervous system, through the autonomic nervous system as it which is the same system it uses to control breathing and heart rate and all those other functions. So the autonomic nervous system will make certain movements or certain pre-programmed changes that will validate the change that the conscious mind has asked. Okay, beyond duality, well, duality is the way that we have um, pretty much... uh, I guess the formation of the matrix that we've all been living in together, duality meaning that there's always opposites in everything we're experiencing, everything we can think of. Uh, You know, there's an opposite to it, good and bad, light and dark, you know, black and white and so forth. We can always think of opposites. And all of that, as we experience life, how we experience life, is all based on conditioning each one of us has from the time we are in the womb actually experiencing the effects of our mother's emotions, of what's going on in the environment around us. Uh, and even, you know, if you want to uh, go into other, other realms, even past lives and so forth, uh, we have all this conditioning and that has been operating 
uh, or I should say that has been directing how we experience life. And so when we work with a pendulum to shift energy, Mm -hmm. uh, we realize that, okay, if we all have this conditioning that goes back to, you know, so far, and there's so many factors that are part of that, you know, ancestral uh, beliefs and so forth, uh, if we all have that, it has to be slightly different for each one of us. So we look at things differently. And we look at things differently. Things change all the time. The way we look at things change, changes all the time. Well, anything that changes all the time, how real is it? How solid is it? Uh, it's what some may call an illusion, you know, or a sleight of hand, just uh, energy. And we heard your... Um, you know, actually, your last conversation before we got on, she was talking about energy, too. Everything is energy. Sure is. Energy is changeable. And so duality is actually hand-in-hand uh, hand with energy. Everything it, that is energetic that we've been experiencing has opposites. There's actually polarities, positive and negative energy. So when we work with all that... Uh, and we shift these patterns, and and I guess it would be the focus of our dowsing system that makes it a bit um, perhaps different, that that uh, gives our focus beyond duality because our, it's the purpose we give it. The purpose we give it is simply to move the energies around that are creating stress in our life and actually create shifts in that energy to make space so that we have room for clarity and peace. And actually, each one of us has access to a sense of uh, something real and permanent rather than just changing frequencies around us all the time. It's an art form. uh, And in in that sense, uh, you know, each practitioner is going to put their own uh, spin, no pun intended, uh, on their particular approach. Uh, so uh, for us, there's really two forms of dowsing. There's the classic form, which really is uh, involved, as Arena was saying, in shifting energies in a dualistic world or dualistic sense. Du- duality only makes sense when we consider the possibility of non-duality. And a non-dual state is a state that is not moving, where there is no change. And as far as the human condition goes, Our thoughts are constantly changing, our experiences are always changing, but there's part of us, you might call it the soul or the spirit, that exists in a non-dual state. And that's our goal, is to, to, with our our form of dowsing, as as we we see it, is to clear away the, uh, the conflicts and the conditioning that we've received in this dualistic dimension so that we can... Um, experience ourselves in a non-dual state. And this is the peace that remains once we've cleared the mind of its memory of conflict. Well, the pendulum doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. Some people feel that you need a special pendulum, it's got to speak to you, it's got to call to you, it's got to do all these things. Actually, what we're really doing with dowsing is we're creating a bridge between the conscious and the superconscious mind, and we are creating a communication that allows whatever we are using as a uh, weighted instrument hanging on a chain or a string uh, to move in response to our uh, the subtle impulses of our nervous system and the unconscious mind. So, frankly, you could douse with a tomato hanging on a vine. Well, of course you are, but you're right. It's the subconscious mind if you have programmed yourself. Now, in our classes, we have a a method to teach people so that their conscious mind isn't left behind, but that they're always in control of of the process. Many people who dabble in these things without proper preparation well, a lot of people get discouraged. They try it, and it works for a little bit, and then, you know, they lose confidence. Or they allow the pendulum to, or the unconscious mind, to take over the process. So there are certain preparations that are very helpful in, 
in staying centered and staying in control of the of the of the process. But yes, you're right. It is the unconscious mind that literally expresses through the micro movements of the uh, mus- musculature of the arm of the of the fingers, etc. That uh, you actually pre-program. There's a certain process we teach where you program your body to produce certain movements in response to yes and no questions. Uh, now, the two types of dowsing that we're talking about, the classic is, of course, you know, when it moves to yes and no, etc. But the active form of dowsing is actually when we spin the pendulum ourselves. We we actually start the movement in order to create a change or a shift in a condition in an issue, uh, etc. So that's the more active form of dowsing where the conscious mind actually starts the process and then the superconscious mind literally through quantum c- connectivity uh, does the work. Well, you know, it, it is possible with that. We have to really acknowledge that there are, uh, that we are existing in a multidimensional universe and uh, what, I'm, what we mean by that is is that there are multiple ranges of vibration uh, in every atom, every molecule, and uh, we're here in 3D, right? Well, well, there is uh, a fourth dimension and a fifth dimension and so forth going on and on, and these are rates of vibration that we can't necessarily see, but that are every bit as vibrant and interactive with us as you know, the neighbor next door. And so there is a spirit world, of course, and uh, and it uh, is, much of that is taking place in the astral plane or fourth dimension. Well, that is the same vibrational level as our emotions and our thoughts. There's a collective thought sphere, if you will, that we're all part of, the superconscious mind, the collective mind. And it's really in the same realm as what we would call uh, the astral plane uh, beyond what we can see, and yet we experience it. So it's hard to say with a Ouija board what's actually working all the time. It can perhaps be an uh, exchange or an interaction between somebody's unconscious mind and other energies in that same plane. When we are working with a pendulum, however, It is a very intentional process, uh, and again, there's a there's a setup, if you will, that we program the bridge between the superconscious and the uh, conscious mind, and so the answers that we are getting and the reactions that we have are really tapping into what some people call our higher self. Can anybody be trained how to douse? Pretty much, uh, as long as they um, allow themselves uh, and have a good imagination. You know, what keeps us from, from these types of skills and gifts, you might say, uh, is our doubts and, uh, and our self-doubt. So I think anyone who is willing to you know, have a playful attitude and to, to accept that there are things beyond our conscious awareness, uh, sure, sure, they can do it. Uh, we're a firm believer that all gifts are actually potentially shared by everyone. We're just waking up to them uh, individually in stages. So this is a very, uh, I, we think it's a very practical skill and tool that anyone can learn. Well, uh, it is as unlimited as our imaginations. We can use it to, we can use it in, for very practical reasons, like for instance, uh, administrative work, you know, which is not my favorite. But when we are planning, um, when we are working on business endeavors and planning our month out in uh, areas that we need to put our attention in and how do we organize this and how, how can we be precise and and who can we call most effectively without wasting a lot of time looking here and there and chasing this down? You can use a pendulum very effectively to save time. You can use a pendulum to actually shift um, anything at the level of the mind, and the mind is the central focus for all of our experiences. 
Well, uh, as Arena was saying earlier, you know, there are many practical applications. Uh, but I think overall the greatest benefit that we've seen uh, for, with our students uh, and those we share this with is a growing self-confidence, a trust. You know, there's so many unknowns and so many uncertainties throughout every day, and that pretty well adds up to stress. So if you can have a reliable, almost like a lie detector built in, where you can actually go within for a few minutes, you know, clarify what your, what your questions are, douse out the best solution, and even douse out statistical uh, factors like probabilities and percentages, you can step into those situations with confidence and uh, so it's really an empowerment tool is, is why we're so excited about it. It's not, it's not like uh, some of the other systems we worked with where people were uh, empowered by technology, which is fine in and of itself, but to be empowered by the use of your own superconscious mind and to be in touch with that, uh, it brings a lot of peace, a lot of grace into people's lives. So just practical things, you know. Um, uh, Can it predict the future? Well, I don't know if anyone can predict the future, uh, George, frankly, because the future is not linear, for one thing. It's not set. Uh, but you can douse probabilities. Now, a probability is, a, is doused in terms of percentages. So when we douse for a future event, a probability, we always qualify that by saying under certain conditions uh, or under current conditions, what is the probability that? And then you ask the question. But the future is something that we're all making up as we go along. And so uh, it's, you know, a probability question like that is always up for change. Can dowsing do any harm to anybody? No, no. Uh, we, don't, we don't see it as really being able to do any harm. It is because we're really tapping into an aspect of the mind that is beyond the ego mind. Uh, we are tapping into an, as as an aspect of the mind that is part of the collective um, will, if you will. And, for, you know, you're here for the highest good of all, right? And that's the level we're operating on when we work with dowsing. We're not working on the conscious egoic, with the conscious egoic mind. So some indications that it may have been used in Egypt as well. There are some uh, pictograms of people holding what appear to be pendulums. Now, they could very well have been using them for uh, surveying as well, but I like to think of them as dowsers. Uh, the individual, your connection that you establish, uh, again, as a bridge between the conscious and unconscious mind, what you're holding really is irrelevant other than you know, preference-wise, uh, certain weights tend to work better, uh, length of the chain or string you're working with tend to perhaps be a bit more efficient. Uh, but it really is, um, first of all, it's a very uh, quick learning device. It's a very quick learning curve, I should say, when you have proper training. And, again, as David mentioned earlier, anyone can do it your confidence level and your assuredness as you're moving along with your dowsing has a lot to do with how accurate and efficient you are. Well, I have to say something about the research method itself. And what it actually proves is a quantum principle. Now, there's a quantum principle called the observer effect. And basically what it says is that what you expect to see, you see. The scientific method is set up in, in, um, by, by proposing a hypothesis and then attempting through uh, experiments to disprove it. So any experiment that is set up to disprove a hypothesis, guess what you're going to get? Well, it's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen. So uh, if they set up an experiment to prove uh, the ability of people to function non-locally, for example... Uh, which many psychic experiments have been done around the world, as a matter of fact, uh, have been very strong uh, in validating the fact that the mind itself is a quantum or non-local phenomenon, so that we actually, our thoughts, literally uh, are independent of time and space. And because we are all connected as individuals in this collective thought field, we literally are in communication with uh, all consciousness, what the Buddhists would call the big mind, 
this is a, a it's not a uh, a mind of separate parts but a, a unified field that we all have access to should we choose to go in that direction uh, we help people learn how to use dowsing to release unconscious blockages in their life that may be holding them back in careers in relationships in in being happy and being healthy uh, we tap into the unconscious mind. We can also time travel with dowsing, and we can go back to certain points in this life or even other lifetimes because all of that is really simply energetic uh, frequencies that are being held in our body now, memories of the past, memories of anything we've ever been through are simply um, energy patterns that can be shifted so we can actually time travel to certain events uh, that were traumatic and release the traumatic memories, and it changes everything. The field is really unlimited. Uh, in our book, we have attempted to uh, you know, create a system that is practical and usable so people can make simple choices like food choices, for example, supplement choices. To what degree does this supplement support me? We can go into organ assessment and, uh, you know, assessing yin and yang energies, et cetera, et cetera. So there are many, many practical applications. Um, and uh, even things like uh, what's wrong with the car. You know, you can create a chart to uh, around any area of interest, uh, you know, from farming to raising children to painting a house. And with all your choices charted out, and you can simply douse your priorities uh, as well as get quantities and percentages around those particular issues. It's not like we walk around all day with our attention focused on the, on a pendulum, mind you. You know, we, we use it in, balance, in a balanced manner in our lives. But when there are certain situations coming up, decisions to make, business decisions, etc., we'll sit down and together we'll, we'll agree on what are the choices, what are the options, and we'll douse them out. And our experience over the years has been that uh, even though we might not understand why a certain thing was chosen as a priority, days or weeks or months later, you'll look back and go, well, of course, that makes perfect sense. So there's, it's been a very strong uh, self-validating system for us in our lives. Uh, you're stuck on the road. The road is closed down ahead of you. You're heading down the highway. You don't know where else to go. And actually you can just tap into accessing an expanded uh, part of your mind that frankly knows all the answers and uh, get directions. Okay, which direction should I go in to have the uh, best probable uh, or I should say most efficient um, use of my time or get to my destination point in the quickest manner, something like that. But so, yeah, it comes in handy all over the place. We finally got a GPS, but before that right. we, were, we used to douse. Right, exactly. I don't know. The <laughs> GPS is ruining us now, George. It, it is. Well, yes, it can work, and frankly, we've never done that kind of work. But I think, uh, as you know, Raymond Grace has. Uh, and actually has done it for law enforcement uh, uh, authorities. Uh, basically, again, um, a map is a holographic representation of a larger space. And so we work with what's called the dowsing system. Now, the dowsing system are, uh, how can I put it, uh, is composed of helpers or spirit guides or guardian angels, if you like. And these are beings that represent uh, the non-locality of the mind. In other words, uh, a spiritual helper can go to a certain situation and come back and give you the information that you're asking, whether it's dowsing a chart or dowsing an alphabet or dowsing a map. So the, the, the critical factor here, though, is the allowance factor. You know, uh, I heard a, um, a whistleblower, Bill Wood, a couple weeks ago, talking about how he was trained as a remote viewer. And he said that his trainers handed him a little metal box. And the little metal box was, was an, an, a crucial, he was told, was a crucial part of his ability to, to do remote viewing. Well, he quickly realized that the remote viewing was a natural gift that anyone can do, and the box was simply a way of controlling it, that if they took away the box, they took away the gift. He realized that the, gift, the box was only a placebo. 
The same principle applies here. If we can allow the possibility through our understanding, not necessarily of mysticism, but of the science, of the grounded science behind this, uh, and we can allow for that possibility, we actually have the experience. The experiences we don't have are the ones we do not allow ourselves to because, as Arena was saying earlier, of our conditioning. People prefer to work with crystals as pendulums or metal pendulums. Uh, there's such a variety of them out there. And again, really, I, I mean, I joked earlier about the tomato on the vine, but frankly, you could use that. We have used um, just about anything, Key. uh, keychains, mm-hmm. you know, anything that a shirt that mm-hmm. you can swing, uh, <laughs> you really can use anything that will swing. What, what we really want to do, George, is take the mysticism out of dowsing. For many, many decades and centuries, you know, it was mired in superstition, and there are still those of a religious persuasion today who won't look at dowsing because of those views. So we really want to bring dowsing into the 21st century. We now have a science. We now understand the physiology. We understand the physics. We understand the connectivity of the mind. And all of this is sufficient to explain how something like dowsing can work. Mm -hmm. Actually, what we would like to do is offer a demonstration. Uh, I mean, we've been talking about the non-locality of the mind, and I know there are many listeners out there who understand this. And... uh, what I would like to do, with your permission, is actually use my pendulum right now to broadcast an intention to relieve the physical bodies of pain. Are you game? Let's see how you do it. Okay. Uh-huh. What we're going to do is we're going to use what we call a harmonic rate. And a harmonic rate is simply a number that carries a specific vibration. Because all minds are joined, we are going to join together now with the intention, and I'm spinning this to the right, by the way. A right spin is an intention or or symbolizes the bringing in of a new energy. So I'm going to symbolize right now and intend with this spin to bring in the harmonic rate of 599 into the minds and energy fields of any of those out in the audience now who are suffering any form of physical pain. Actually, I I doused ahead of time, George, that this was the correct rate for pain. Okay. Now, if anybody out there wants to write this down and carry it with them, they're certainly free to do so. You can also write it on a piece of paper and put a glass of water over the paper, and it will also imprint the water for future use. But as I'm speaking right now, I'm actually right spinning, uh, and I actually started the spin with my conscious mind, But we call this putting in the mental clutch as we disengage from any attachment to the outcome of this exercise and allow the superconscious mind to actually do the work. So my job is kind of like a telephone operator. I'm just making the connections and putting in a little intention here. But I am spinning in the 599 now as we speak, and I suggest any of those folks out there, again, that are dealing with pain, and I know it's a big issue for many people, just to open their minds and allow for the possibility that this intention and this rate could actually shift the energy around their pain issue. Uh, David, using the spin with the pendulum, creating the spin with the pendulum, it is actually creating what we call a little subfield within the quantum field. And the spinning action itself, similar to a tornado, actually creates a still point in the center, uh, really replicating what is, well, it's a silent or still space that accesses all dimensions. So an intention is dropped in it, and it can create changes on all vibrational levels or physical, mental, emotional changes, however you want to look at that. But that's what the spin actually helps with. Everything in creation has a spin to it, uh, thoughts, emotions, everything. So, so the spin is, is opening the possibility for another reality. And, again, if we're doing a personal dowsing session and the, and the results that we're getting seem to be going off into left field, we'll often just stop and we'll ask, is there some interference? As Arena mentioned earlier, the fourth dimension or the astral or mental plane is also dualistic. So there are thought forms that are positive and life-affirming, and there are also thought forms that resist life and, um, you know, tend to keep us in suffering. 
So, uh, you know, we, we swim in the same soup as everybody else. And if we notice that things are going a little south, we'll just, we'll just stop and ask if there's interference. If there is, we'll ask for it to be cleared, and then we'll just move on. It's not 100%. I don't think anything here on this earth plane that we're living in is 100%, to be honest with you, because everything is changeable. Uh, nothing's absolute. There's, you know, frankly, just our eternal nature is absolute. Uh, so there are times when it doesn't work, and the beauty of it is we don't get attached to that. I would say that there's a great percentage of times, so though, that we have tangible results. First of all, to understand, uh, as we've been explaining this evening, you know, the, the science, the physiology, uh, the philosophy behind how this works. And then we, we take them through a step-by-step process where they actually, you know, it's a hands-on uh, process, where they actually build their own confidence, they do their own clearings, they have their own experiences, and then they work together in small groups. So our classes, which generally are a two-and-a-half-day class, uh, is very much an experiential, uh, hands-on uh, event. Now, the book, Dowsing Dual- Beyond Duality, was written as a home study course as well. Matter is energy. Energy and matter are interchangeable. The only thing that makes something physical is that the matter is vibrating slow enough that our senses can perceive it as something solid. And and that, of course, was Einstein's great contribution, is that energy and matter are interchangeable. Thought is also energy, which can be measured, you know, with biofeedback, as uh, like EEG, for example, and actually has an electromagnetic signature. So if we apply thought, particularly with will and intention and even love, that thought can shift the energy to the point where the matter itself uh, changes in quality. Probably the easiest demonstration of that is with water. I believe that Raymond on your show a couple of years ago did an experiment with water. He sure did. And uh, that's a perfect illustration of what we're just talking about. Through the power of thought, we shift the energy of that water and uh, and anything else for that matter. Now, whether it's tangible to our senses or not is another question. Now, the fact that the water is so easily programmable is possibly one of the reasons why our physical bodies are also equally programmable and affected by dowsing, because our bodies, of course, are mostly water. My daughter is dealing with some drug addiction, and she's 19. I'm very concerned for her. And I'm just kind of wondering if this is something that might be able to help her. She's just always got a negative thing about her, negative energy or just always a negative, poor me kind of problem. And I'm wondering if there's anything I can do, you know, to help her maybe through this kind of process of dowsing. Yeah. Do you have any recommendation at all? Certainly, yeah. People who are caught into these... uh, you know, loop, negative behavioral loops very often are responding to uh, negative uh, or non-beneficial spiritual energies. So okay. if you can, through, through the use of the appropriate chart, you can determine which, which spiritual energy uh, you're, she's dealing with and then which spiritual helpers you can call upon to clear that energy, you can be very pivotal in helping her, uh, you know, get a, get a little bit of fresh air in her life by clearing those energies. Uh, particularly mm-hmm. with the drug addiction, there seems to be what we call lower en- astral entities often involved. Really? Well, and she's more scared of going through withdrawal than quitting the drug. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, there's natural herbs and all kinds of things that you can do that will probably help with the pain, you know, because you, I guess you do have pain with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just things like that that are so simple to me to answer the question to her, you know, but then she don't utilize, you know, what I'm trying to tell her. So it's almost, I don't know. (laughs) It is ultimately her decision. And, you know, it's very difficult for parents uh, particularly to appreciate this, but Earth is a school, and we are all here learning a curriculum that we actually chose and designed in another existence between lives. And so even these types of problems, there's a a pearl in this oyster for her, but her own will needs to be activated 
in order for her to access that. So to love her and forgive her uh, and to see her for who she truly is, aside from the behavior. Our understanding is that all behavior is either an expression or a call for love. This is clearly a call for love. So uh, I know it sounds simple, and you know, uh, but, but it's, it really is the most powerful medicine. Now, you can douse to support her physically. You can support her psychically the way we've been talking. But ultimately, it is her choice, and it's the love that she perceives from you that is going to give her the strength and the will to make that. Hi, I'm a first-time caller. Oh, I love the you. show. Great. Um, and I'm really enjoying the, the program tonight. Um, my question is, how do you know the difference between um, the answers that you're getting from your higher self versus your ego? Well, the answer is, um, first of all, uh, with, the, with using a pendulum and dowsing as a modality to access answers, uh, we put ourselves in a, the correct brainwave state to begin with, and you can also uh, do certain things to check your level of dowsing accuracy and your and your really tuning into an alpha wave state uh, rather than your conscious mind um, natural pl- problem solving beta state. So so we set it up in a way that you are um, more confident at the you know with the outcome of the answers. And another thing is, uh, in general, so in general, we're able to access whether we're having uh, most probably an answer from our higher self. And uh, there is a different sense often. There is a different sense uh, that you may get when an answer comes from your higher self than it does your beta mind. There literally is... A, a parasympathetic response in the body that is activated when you are accessing your higher mind, if you will, or your higher self. And so there's a relax, a sense of relaxation and a sense of peace. Your autonomic nervous system is basically relaxed and operating on a different, a specific level. When we are just tapping into the beta mind, if you will, we often are, um, If you're sensitive to it, you can sense that there's a bit more tension or stress or um, lack of confidence and certainty at the answer, the outcome. I'm a veteran that suffers from PTSD, and would this dowsing help uh, with the treatments of PTSD also? Yes, uh, although, Mark, we have to be uh, very clear here that this is not a medical procedure and it doesn't you know, replace uh, appropriate medical treatment, but we can work with clearing the energies uh, around a condition. So, for example, with the stress and the and the memories and the uh, the actual physical uh, manifestations of PTSD, uh, we have found that this is an excellent technique for releasing stress and also releasing the deeper levels of um, guilt or uh, remorse, or e- even some of the spiritual energies that you may have picked up, uh, a person may have picked up in those in those very stressful situations. By clearing the energy around a situation, you know, we look at the body and the mind as self-healing systems. So all we can realistically do is help to clear away the patterns of suffering, the patterns of pain, the patterns of stress around an issue, and very often... Uh, the body and the mind will self-heal once we give it that space. Well, that sounds great. I appreciate your uh, your input, and uh, I'll definitely look into it. Thanks, guys. Okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. How long does it take to train someone? Not very long at all. At the end of one of our workshop weekends, uh, I would say that 99.9% of our students are uh, pretty competent at getting up and going and then you know of course we offer um, other courses after that to support that and help them grow but it doesn't take very long it's a quick learning curve um, I wondered what this has to do with kinesiology and if there's any difference and um, I also was um, really glad just to have these topics on the air 
uh, this evening, and thanks so much. Okay. That's a really good question, and uh, there are definitely some similarities. Uh, the physiological pathways that we talked about, you know, the conscious and the superconscious and the, the autonomic nervous system and all that, it definitely comes into play with muscle testing. The thing I find with muscle testing, though, is that you're somewhat limited, uh, and, of course, uh, you know, the different skill levels are really dependent on the accuracy and the, the depth of the, uh, of the practitioner to ask questions. It really is an investigative uh, modality. Uh, where where the dowsing differs, I think, is in its uh, active phase, where once you get the information, you can then go about shifting that energy or creating a new possibility or even a new reality out of that situation. So uh, for me, uh, again, I'm biased, of course, but for me, dowsing is, um, it has more dimensions of possibility to it than strictly muscle testing. And, and I was, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, also with muscle testing, very often you're dealing with two individuals, the tester and the testee. And the risk with that is that the unconscious uh, of the two can conspire to actually create false uh, results. Uh, And there's often an unconscious desire on the part of the tester, as well as the testee for that matter, as to what the outcome should be. Uh, With dowsing, again, as we were mentioning, there are specific steps you do to clear yourself of that level of interference, and you make it very uh, plain and obvious through the technique uh, when you are actually clear of those unconscious. uh, Basically, uh, anything that uh, somebody uh, can come up with as as far as an inquiry goes, uh, what we're looking to find answers on, or also uh, if we're lacking peace in life in some area, if we have an area in our lives, career-wise, relationship-wise, whatever it be, uh, where we are not at peace, we can investigate that area, come to, you know, come up with answers uh, of patterns that are underlying this um, the stress in our lives and release it. Yes, good morning. Uh, I consider this uh, synchronous uh, serendipity. I had just picked up uh, to read a second time a book called Pendulum Power by um, Nielsen and Polanski, and I'm just so excited about this show, so I'm going to give a brief three-part question, and I'll listen over the air. Uh, I'd like to know more about your classes, uh, David and Marina, and where you guys are located. I'd like to know also about radi. I think it's called radiesthesia or radionics. Radionics. Yeah, as to, well, well the radiesthesia is also a term too, but it deals with using as as a type of uh, using the pendulum for medical diagnosis, and in answering that, also speak to. Um, the suppression of this type of knowledge. And uh, lastly, if you could give, uh, I'm really grateful that you guys have brought a dimension in terms of shifting energy because there's so much fascinating information in the book, but it doesn't bring that. So if you could give more specific examples of those of us learning to use the pendulum as to how we can change psychic and physical realities. And I'll listen over the air. Thank you so much, George, for this program. You are welcome. Wow, those are just great questions. Thank you so much. Uh, We we live in Boulder, Colorado, and um, we teach classes locally, and we also travel. So, you know, I would suggest that you check our website, bluesunenergetics.net, and there are specific pages for the classes we teach. We also do personal consultations, sessions, uh, or dowsing classes over webinar. So there's a lot of different options for you there to, to connect with us, and we'd be happy to help you along on your journey. Uh, radiesthesia, as far as I know, is a European and Latin American term for, for dowsing. And as far as uh, you know, medical diagnoses goes, this country is very tightly controlled in that area. Uh, the the FDA they and come they, down hard, don't they? They come down hard, so we don't even go there, frankly. And I'll tell you about diagnoses. Uh, not only is it illegal for anyone who's not a licensed physician to diagnose, but frankly, most diagnoses aren't true anyway. So by staying away from diagnoses, you're actually probably doing a greater service uh, to those that you're working with. 
the AMA admits that 70% of diagnoses are wrong to begin with. But nevertheless, we can make determinations and ask questions about the energy of certain situations. And then by shifting those energies, the situations very often can change. We just have to be very careful in today's world uh, in how we couch that and uh, what claims we make. So we're really, uh, actually my wife and I are licensed spiritual health coaches. And this is another educational program that we actually offer. We teach people, particularly health practitioners, specific skills that allows them to become licensed as health uh, spiritual health coaches. So any work we do with a client uh, is on that level, and our clients understand it, that it's spiritual healing. Now, if their pain goes away or their symptoms subside, as a result of that, we can't help that. But what they have received is spiritual healing. Uh, and Arena is going to give you some examples of things that we have experienced ourselves. Okay. For instance, we have had uh, folks... Um, Really have tangible results with physical issues as a re, uh, you know as a result of a dowsing session, accessing. Um, actually, what happens is it's everything at the core is happening on the level of mind uh, before it becomes a physical man- manifestation, including our bodies, and so the mind, each one of us, um, our mind will allow us, will give us information through a series of questions, systematic question asking with the dowsing system. It'll take us down a trail and lead us to a very specific point in time and space and experience that it is willing to let go of a storyline or stress. And when we get to that point, which is not difficult to get to, When we get to that point and we release those patterns with a spin of our pendulum and a clear intention, what happens is the memory of that stress, that trauma, is literally released from the nervous system, from the body, and from the field, the energy field. When that occurs, oftentimes the manifestations uh, that were effects of that trauma leave as well. For instance, we... Hold on for a second. Let's come right back and we'll take final calls as well. uh, A lot of persecution in the past. Um, In many cultures, uh, you know, there were thousands, if not um, actually millions there were, of particularly women that were uh, killed, uh, persecuted and killed, hung, burned at the stake, you know, uh, for practicing natural uh, methods of healing. You know, uh, any practices that couldn't be explained, that were thought as mystical, uh, brought up fear in people. And so they were condemned for those type of practices. Yeah, when you're working with nature, uh, it's always uh, optimal results with minimal side effects. Well, I might ask, first of all, do I have permission from all involved to work with this person or with this particular situation? I would go for a yes or no response on that. Okay. And if there's a specific condition or situation at hand, we have a specific line of inquiry that we use to get to the bottom of the issue. And basically that is to ask which domain is the root cause of this problem. Say someone has an issue, a physical issue, a pain or something, we'll ask, is this issue at root physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, environmental? And we'll wait for yes or no answers on those different domains. And what we're really asking is what level of the mind will this person allow access to without fear? Hey, listen, I wanted to share with you guys, I use the pendulum in my alternative uh, therapies practice. I, I work with animals and my main animal is my the horses. And I use the pendulum to actually assess the chakras on the animals and the, the pendulum will guide me in which chakra is blocked. And I can go all the way through all the seven chakras and if I have a blocked chakra, I go, okay, well, I'm going to now do some Reiki. Or I'm going to do some work with my tuning forks, and boom, everything's open. And I can go right through the animal if 
if anything's wrong with the animal, I can just tap the pendulum, and boom, there we are. It's awesome. That's great. That is awesome. That's wonderful that you're using that, and animals are so receptive to this type of work. And, you know, the pendulum is you could take the pendulum work one step further. Uh, I mean, you have other modalities you're using, too, which that's wonderful. And the pendulum, too, can remove the blockages as well. You can use it uh, in specific ways to literally take that energy out the same way you would with your other modalities like uh, Reiki and the tuning forks. Oh, absolutely. I've watched it. Um, I've asked the pendulum. Um, well, the program, well, what I say is the program, you know, your, your, uh, spinning to the right is open, spinning to the left is, you know, taking stuff out. Let's, let's clear this area. So it's like in reverse. I'm like, okay, here we go. Let's do the reverse and let's clear out this energy and it'll start to spin a little bit, you know, at a time. And then pretty soon it's, the the circle is larger and larger and larger, and I can have that thing just literally just going crazy, you know. <laughs> and um, then it'll calm back down, and it'll uh, it'll it will do the job. Yes, you're a hundred percent right there. I mean, hands down. I I've watched it over and over again, and whether it's on the horses, whether it's on my dogs, whether it's on a cat, whether <clears throat> whether it's on a human. Same, same. I mean, I can I can bring the energy up in an area where um, I've had a gentleman's shoulder uh, quite painful, and I'll say, okay, well, let me let, let's identify kind of where you're at here, and then now I'm going to concentrate on having this this painful area removed, and the pendulum will go in the opposite direction, and it'll start spinning slow, and then work itself up a little bit, and it's nice to talk to a person because they can actually walk you through their levels and mm-hmm. how they're, you know, feeling at a time. Or the animals, I can I can watch their their expressions, their body language, their eyes, and that's how they speak to me, you know, basically. Beautiful. But, yes, the pendulum is, is a really, really unique, awesome tool to use. Uh, oh, hands down, I that. love it, and and it it's kind of a what shall I say? It, it, it there's a lot of uh, hmm, hesitation, shall we say, with some people that I've pulled up into many many horse barns, and people come out and go, "What the heck are you?" Doing? Uh, well, she talked about the necessity of coming from a relaxed mental state or what we call an alpha brainwave state. And uh, if you're too agitated or you're too focused on a specific outcome, you're in problem-solving mode, your brainwaves are actually more excited and in the beta, what we call the beta range of brainwaves. And that actually prevents the higher intuition and the uh, the higher level information from coming through, from coming through I should say. You know, uh, Edgar Casey many years ago predicted that a new energy would come to this planet around this time. And in his words, this energy would represent the next major phase in human development. And Raymond Grace t- tells the story of how in 1996, his dowsing friends from around the world began to perceive a new energy available and this became eventually known as the planetary consciousness grid or the Christ consciousness grid. And uh, interestingly, though, what the early dowsers discovered was that it actually has a frequency, this grid that connects us all on this planet with this beautiful healing potential vibrates at 10 hertz. 10 hertz is the same frequency your brain vibrates when you are in a relaxed alpha state. So it's like when you're in that state, almost like a premeditative state, you're allowing, you're requesting, you're in a very loving, uh, non-expectancy, you're plugged in. You're part of that grid. But as soon as you start worrying or or anticipating or trying to solve the problem on a mental level, it's like you you unplug from that system and you're you're basically running on your own. Uh, A couple questions, actually. Um, Well, first off... um, how do you tell the difference between um, 
uh, dowsing and getting a message from the spirit versus yourself. And also, also I was wondering if maybe you could, uh, you know, give me some input on uh, maybe some resources or books uh, on a beginner to learn dowsing. Because I, I just recently um, bought this book by, uh, it's called The Pendulum, Pendulum Kit by uh, Sig uh, Lonegren, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I I mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, it touched base on how you know whether you really tapped into your higher self or not in getting answers. And I did actually refer to the difference between your beta mind and the relaxed state or, uh, you know, your higher self. As far as getting interference from um, other uh Entities, if you will, or spirits, uh, we we actually clear ourselves first and make sure that we have no interference when we're starting a dowsing session. We intentionally engage our spirit guides, our higher self, whatever feels most appropriate at the time, and check in to confirm that we're online with that. So there are ways that you can confirm uh, the information that you're accessing, or I should say the source of the information you're accessing uh, pretty dependably. And as far as a how-to book, I I honestly have to give us a little plug on that because uh, our Dowsing Beyond Duality book takes you up and it gets you up and going from just the very beginning all the way through advanced dowsing. So it's a very comprehensive book with diagrams and um, easy to understand explanations on how everything's working. For all the people listening that's got health problems, you learn how to do this, take it to the grocery store. That pendulum moves on that, that's what you want to eat. <laughs> and uh, map it. dowsing, it really does work. I have found one dead person. And uh, you know, sometimes it's supposed to meant to be, but I actually went down to the search and rescue and said, "Hey, this is where she is." And a week later, the guy confessed. But I don't know if I really had anything to do with it. And as far as the medical in, uh, issue, I've ran into people who said they got cancer, and I says, "No, don't just lay down. Don't tell me where it is." And you can actually find where their cancer is. So if they've got problems before they find out, obviously they knew at that time where it was, but I didn't. They didn't tell me. But you can find it. The pendulum will react different. And Hmm. if there's a small issue coming on before they have problems, you can find that and say, you better get this area checked out. Mm. But it, uh, she... Well, let's put it this way. Neither uh, Neither of us have seen a doctor in the last eight years. It is a, a, a feedback mechanism to amplify uh, subtle movements of the musculature. So the instrument itself, there's nothing mystical about a pendulum, and there's nothing powerful about a pendulum other than the inherent qualities of the crystal or whatever. Again, we want to get away from giving our power away to technologies, to to objects and realize that we are the ultimate technology and that all of our outer technologies are really expressions or projections of a human potential. So again, anything works. And, uh, you know, we, we have a, a number of different uh, pendulums that we've picked up here and there. And quite frankly, you get the same results with whatever one you're using. Whether it's steel, crystal, whatever. Mm-hmm. Not. No, it's the weight, really, and the density that, that makes the difference. And, and everyone's going to have a different density that works best for them. You know, for some people, a lighter wooden uh, pendulum suits them best. Yeah. Other people need a heavier so that it's not too overreactive. But for me, uh, the, the density and the length of uh, you know, how long you hold the chain also makes a difference. Many pendulums come with long chains, you know, six to eight inches, and if you hold it at the end of that, it's going to take forever to get results. Take a moment to tell us about the book, Dowsing Beyond Duality. Sure. Uh, It's actually the uh, end result. Uh, Rena and I together uh, over the last few years with our teaching compiled three different manuals, uh, a basic manual, a manual of charts, and then a, a manual for advanced spiritual dowsing. And uh, the publisher of my first book, uh, which is uh, Navigating the Collapse of Time, uh, was interested, actually, in publishing this book as a follow-up. 
they saw it as kind of a practical application for many of the ideas in the first book. So uh, our publisher has, uh, you know, was very uh, excited to get this out, and it's just been released. It's now on Amazon. It's also on our website. It's creeping up the charts, I, I noticed, by the way. Oh, oh, good. I, I'd like to see that chart That's and douse it up. <laughs> it's, it's going up. It's going up. And how about you, Irina? Irina? Yes, uh, with the book, we you know we're, we are very excited about it, and it really is also um, foundational for a course that we are offering, and we're just putting together on how exactly that's going to look. But it is a course that offers students an opportunity to get a, a board certification, not through us, but through a, you know through a. a regular certification board, uh, to get a uh, certification as a spiritual dowser. And, uh, you know, not that you have to have one as a dowser, but it really does imply that, you know, you've gone through a uh, substantial training and you know what you're doing and uh, understand why it's really working. I think that's important. So you're more effective that way. 